has been the most dynamic part of its economy with leading GDP growth for the past two decades. India serves an example as to how service sector can play an important role in a country's economic growth. India is doing reasonably well in retail sector and the financial sector, including insurance. It is now eager to open up the pension sector also to foreign investors. The way these sectors have been developed with a robust regulatory and policy framework also holds important lessons for other countries. India's financial sector has been one of the fastest growing sectors in the economy. Good morning, everyone. We have gathered here for a panel discussion today regarding the changing paradigms in the financial sector, and ISBR has invited some of the best players for a discussion. We are glad to present our guest for today, Ms. C.K. Vanita, Chief Financial Planner, C. Profits Investment Center, and she also has a 15 years of work experience with Aditya Birla Money and Bajaj Capital. I would now invite Dr. Mansa to felicitate our guest. Our next guest for today would be Mr. Nitish Saha, Assistant Manager, Edelweiss. I would now request Mr. Mayus Jain to felicitate our guest. Our next panelist, Mr. Raja Ram Kalal, AGM and Branch Manager, IDBI Bank, I would request Mr. Abbas to felicitate our guest. We have another guest, Ms. Swapna from IDBI Bank. I would request Professor Bindu to felicitate our guest. Our moderator for today's discussion is Mr. Partho Ganguly, Corporate Relations, ISBR. Uh, the banking, financial, uh, BFSI sector has been one of the most dynamic sectors in terms of events happening, impacts happening, and the population getting affected or not getting affected, population turning richer or poorer, predominantly. This sector fuels, this sector has brought in terms got started getting structured. It, it happened in maybe three phases. Yeah. One one phase started probably in eighty five. Yeah. Okay, hello. It started in 1978 sir, when the nationalization of banks started. Okay, when the government of India took the initiative to start up, you know, take up the banks into under government control under Act of uh, Nationalization of Banks Act, 1978. And one more phase, it is started in 1993 when uh, the P. V. Narasimha sir has taken initiative to liberalize and uh, you know the uh, start up some new private sector banks. And uh, since then, the new private sector banks such as uh, ICSA Bank, HDFC, Access, IDBI Bank, all these new sector banks uh, you know, took the licenses. The one more phase which is yet to start, that is the uh, new private sector bank licenses, 26 uh, you know, applications already received by the RBI for the new banks, and it is under scrutiny under uh, Bimal Chalan sir, uh, you know, the ex RBI governor, Bimal Chalan, he is the scrutiny, uh, the in charge for the scrutiny of these applications. Uh, see, uh, uh, as you say, what 
what exactly has happened in the last decade? If we talk about the BFSI segment, Uh, uh, the when it compares to the last decade, okay, the growth in the these sectors, the financial and the investment sector, is phenomenal. From in the last ten, you uh, know, the ten years or the last decade, what I can say is, that, you know, the financial industry, banking industry has taken, you know, phenomenal growth. Consistently, it is growing at the rate of the 25 to 35 percent, somewhere between 25 percent to 35 percent. And uh, if you see the growth of the apart from the nationalization bank, government banks and the private sector banks and other NBFCs also such as uh, you know, the Reliance Capital, Aditya Billa Group or Edelweiss or Relig. If you see any NBFC or the, you know, uh, the life insurance uh, companies or general insurance companies, each and every company they, you know, they started the business in the year of 1995 or somewhere between 95 to 2000 but they started growing up from the 2000 onwards. Till that, till date. Okay. Now they are entering into the banking sector also. Some of the NBFCs, some of the you know, financial companies, they are entering into the banking sector also. The growth in the last decade is uh, phenomenal, and it's the consistently it is growing. As you said, the, you know the consistent consistent growth is there, and it is you know the one of the backbone of the uh, country, the this uh, BFSI industry which is contributing in terms of financial inclusion, in terms of investments, in terms of uh, foreign direct investment or FIS investment. Taking any investment or any industry, starting of the industry or any, any starting of the company, backbone of these all industries and company, it starts from the bank or the investment companies. And one more sector which has shown the you know, phenomenal growth, that is the, uh, the, the startup company financing. There is the uh, venture financing. Okay, the venture financing is one thing where the new fi new companies started, you know, with uh, this kind of uh, new venture financing companies and uh, these venture financing companies identifying the potential small companies and those companies are, you know, in uh, becoming a bigger companies in the, you know, or you can say the the large cap companies in a in a shorter period of uh, say five to ten years. Thank you. Uh, now a lot of lot of work has happened from the government side, a lot of liberalizations as you say has happened and we have reached to a certain level. Now, uh, but you know which, which are the areas which require focus, would Vanita like to add on this? Happy morning one and all and uh, one is actually uh, as Raj rightly observed, the growth has been phenomenal and beyond the growth actually we need to just uh, look at one more thing, grow gracefully. So when uh, in uh, this last decade, the banking system, the entire BFSI has just grown in a very graceful way. That is the quality has come in the system because earlier you would have just seen banks selling products. Now actually they have just got into advisory and again the financial service maybe with the regulatory bodies being quite strong in India, lot of Things have just happened, a lot of changes have happened, which has really just brought a, uh, brought a very quality thing in the system. Say like we just talk about a lot of re regulations, uh, particularly now actually we just say EUIN, that is an employee unique identification number. So because the boomeranging uh, keeps on <coughs> happening, one employee works for A company, he just moves to B, he moves to C. So now there is a clear tracking, no one can just do misselling in the system. That is when you just talk about advising a product, the employee moves from uh, moves to a number of companies, but still this quality of advice is being tracked by SEBI. And again, actually, if you just look at the banking thing, a lot of regulations have just come in. They say actually the uh, actually the space which is exclusively for advice should be differentiated from the banking transaction space. And again, actually, if you just look at IRD. A lot of regulations have just come in the pension reforms. Now we just talk about a lot of changes every day. So the regulatory bodies are just getting stronger. Maybe at this point of time, one is you guys are just getting graduated or you are just planning to uh, just get into the specialization uh, uh, thing, right? So probably you are, uh, uh, I just heard from Mr. Parthu that you are just going to choose your specialization. So what are all the sectors you can look at at this point of time? Because all of us, we have just come from uh, the financial service. So 
so that doesn't stop us from talking about other sectors as well maybe at this point of time one is which are all the sectors which are promising one is the banking and financial services and other one is the healthcare because healthcare is evergreen when you just talk about defensive stocks obviously we used to say fmcg pharma because whether uh, uh, that is a country is going to grow or not the fmcg and pharma should and must grow because when we fall sick obviously we have to just uh, take up the necessary initiative again actually fmcg is yes, consumer goods actually india is a, a democratic country which has huge domestic consumption so we just talk about huge domestic consumption and obviously our fmcg sector plays a vital role and now actually things are very competitive and government has just announced lot many things the fdi investment has just come so that makes the industry go uh, to go in a very aggressive phase industry is going very very competitive so because when walmart is coming and obviously actually food ma that is whatever you just have maybe a food world everything should just try to compete so thereby they need to just bring in the quality in the system so you have uh, sufficient growth because people uh, we all just welcome only creative innovative minds because if you look at uh, this particular decade which is going to be far sure remembered in the history as a uh, maybe a decade of challenge so one should just go with bold challenges because things have changed a lot it's not a time where we can just go do some ready made task so we can't just uh, do the ready made task you need to go very innovative very creative and you need to look at uh, things differently you can't just simply delegate the same kind of job so one is whether it is banking and financial service or a healthcare or it at this point of time at this point of time even it looks very promising one is actually uh, with the currency depreciation and uh, with a global market recovery it is also one of the most spoken sector so these are all the sectors which are going very prominent very promising in this particular period so as he rightly observed one is the growth has been phenomenal in the financial service not only the growth the quality has come in the system so that is uh suddenly sebi started feeling that we should just compete with the developed countries so where actually for advice also the fee is being paid because now every investor they should know as to where they are investing and if a misselling happens how to just overcome that how to guide the investor so all such clarity has been given only in this decade so not simply you can't just go delegate a instant job now you need to think differently you need to just Uh, whether it is advisory or whether it is pharma whether it is healthcare uh, that is whether it is uh, your it you have to just think in a very different way and uh, if you look at the opportunities opportunities are very huge it is for a person who can just take up bold challenges that's all because one is uh, with all such changes and with uh, the crisis which went on in the economy it's made very clear that we need to just go taking enough initiative it is not the time to relax it's a time to just start thinking as to what way we can improvise so what all the steps we need to just uh, take at this point of time so as you guys are just getting into the uh, period where you need to just choose your specialization i would uh, just definitely suggest you to look at bfsi which is a promising segment because whether it is insurance mutual funds banking it has a very promising future because india is also just going into a period of mna that is you will uh, uh, because if you just look at the other developed countries uh, maybe it is us you would have seen lakhs and lakhs of mutual fund companies whereas here with the regulatory maybe thanks to the regulatory bodies things are streamlined you have quality players in the system again actually there are quality advisors in the system maybe one side plus minus so we can uh, be a uh, pessimist we can be optimist but it is always better to be optimist so that your mind will open up you'll have n number of opportunities before your eyes because by being an pessimist maybe a uh, lot many people would come and say what's this this is happening gdp has just come to 4.4% our industrial uh, index of industrial production has come to minus 2.2% you are uh, all talking about bfsi and all kind so always look at things differently when things are dull that's the right time to get into whether it is a stock whether it is an investment or whether it is advisory thing even i just opened my uh, wealth management company by name c profit just last month i came across couple of uh, that is two sets of investors you uh, that is almost all are uh, very lovable and they just tried guiding me well one set of investors uh, that is came and asked me 
what Juanita is it the right time to just get into this industry because industry is undergoing a big change why do you want to take up such bold call then I said very clearly when everybody is just quitting and everybody is getting scared that's the right time to get into because you have to just pat the shoulder and say you are there by the side of the investor so that's the right time and for the above all the main thing is you need to be knowledgeable you need to be you need to know how to tackle the situation so this particular decade has taught you enough and going to teach you very well on the quality path so the phase whatever we are undergoing is a very quality phase so because a lot of things now we can't be like earlier we have to read the updates then and there whether it is investment pharma healthcare because everything is getting competitive and industry is also undergoing consolidation phase it's a right time and as i said one is uh, again if you just look at uh, healthcare a yes, lot of changes are just happening there as well maybe uh, one is it is a defensive sector and again as uh, fdi investments are possible as the flows have been huge despite the stringent regulations posted by government as yes, that is also a very promising sector and again if you just look at the uh, cost of uh, hospitalization you would have observed there is a clear uh, clear clean cut path there as well because one is the cost of uh, cost has gone up it is not that simply cost has gone up you would not have seen uh, maybe quality, uh, quality hospitals like uh, fortis maybe a uh, lot of takeovers just happening there as well maybe a uh, fortis apollo and uh, columbia you could see n number of hospitals with the quality so that's one thing when you talk about quality obviously it is a challenging call so you guys should just uh, take a bold call you guys should just get updated so much to just uh, track the system non-performing loans and provisioning for credit losses becoming a key area of concern for the Indian financial system. Now, uh, McKenzie has outlined a few uh, things that probably, probably the Indian and foreign firms which are present in this country should look at. So I, I would like your opinion on that. They have suggested unification. They have suggested a customer-centric approach. They have suggested engage in multi-pronged strategies for expanding economic opportunity. To top it all, they are talking about doing something to increase the penetration and collaborating. And there are, there are best practices that, international best practices that need to be now, I, I would like, like you to, uh, you know, kind of share your opinion on what's happening uh, in these areas in terms of the, you know, banking industry, the mutual fund sector, the, you know, equity sector, so that uh, we have a better understanding of how companies are gearing up. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. actually, you just spoke about the that is expansion or the penetration to the areas other one is you also just asked about the non-performing loans and other one is you just asked about the quality in the system so maybe if you just look one by one one is uh, if you just look at the measures that were announced by our new rba governor maybe who is the second youngest uh, governor after uh, manmohan singh uh, so seriously in a series of uh, measures have been announced totally in you know, the seven measures 
uh, which is just unknown, were pretty strong because he started. He also just focused on whatever factors you just highlighted now. You just spoke about McKinsey report, probably uh, uh, Raghuram Rajan being a IMF uh, chief economic advisor has got a good international market expertise as well. So uh, he also just highlighted on all these key areas. Just starting from non-performing uh, loans. So that is one of his focus. Because he just said the NPL has to be just, uh, just given an immediate attention. Because when as we were talking about the non-performing assets, he also just started adding non-performing loans. So the speedy recovery and the focus on that. And above all, this particular RBA governor is focused on growth and not simply on inflation. When you talk about growth, obviously the interest rate should just be brought down. Only if the interest rate uh, comes down, your corporate lending, corporate borrowing would go up in a big way. And thereby actually the recoveries would also be much, much stronger. So that is one thing. So that is one focused area which he has already uh, taken into consideration. So enough uh, importance has been given to NPL. That's one thing. Other one is penetration, the expansion into other markets. So already the bank branch approvals were in pending. So he made it very clear. He has just given the clear cut signal for expansion of more bank branches. When you say a new branch, obviously when Raj was just telling the electronic city branch got opened, it's very clear when a new branch comes in, obviously the aggression comes in. Why all of a sudden Indian market just uh, underwent a big change in last 10-15 days? It's because of a new change which was just brought in. A new change will also just come along with greater confidence. So when you just announce series of measures, the same measures have been announced by a number of people. But when it comes from the new governor, it aroused the spirit, it aroused confidence in all their minds. So one is NPL is being taken care of because this time we just feel the implementation is going to be the focused thing. Because earlier announcements were being made. Now actually we are talking about the implementation. Again, when you say expansion, one is a bank branch expansion that he has already considered. He says he is just going to give speedy approval for that. Again, the banking license, the, they are going to shortlist the banking license by Jan 14. So that is uh, very shortly going to come. So already you would have just read in almost all the papers. So Bajaj, Finserv, Sriram, Aditi Birla, and so many have been already shortlisted and we hope that uh, that will happen by uh, Jan 14. So we just spoke about these two. Again, quality. When you talk about quality in terms of investment, in terms of advice, you have to look at a couple of factors. You have to be optimist as well as pessimist. When you, say, uh, when you just go pessimist, more than 10 lakh insurance agents have shunned business since 2010. You mean to say that India is not a good country for insurance? It's not that. You had a lot of people selling insurance. See, it should come through a proper advice. Insurance is not a bad product, provided it is just given to the right customer and provided the right product is being given. So that's one thing. Again, actually, by 2008, August, the exit loads, uh, that is, entry loads were waived off in mutual funds. So again, so many agents, they shun the business because they were all literally selling the products. See, when you say, uh, whether it is a mutual fund, FD, what should be the asset allocation and uh, which product the customer should choose, what is the risk, uh, client's risk appetite and uh, how much of his money should get into short term, long term. So a lot of things have to be looked at. So we can't just guide any investor blindly. So with the exit load waiver, there is a clear entry of quality in the system. So you had a lot of people who were selling. Even I have just come across a number of uh, advisors, maybe the subbroker kind. They used to just come along with 10 lakh, 20 lakhs application for a sectoral fund. I was simply asking, sir, did you just inform the client that uh, this is a sectoral fund? Then he said, no, Anita, don't bother. It does just come 20 lakhs, just, uh, just process the application. Yeah, yeah, certainly. The other, the other thing of interest is, uh, you know, this, this sector has been, like the IT sector, has been one of the huge employers and incrementally increased, right? Now, from that perspective, uh, and from the business growth perspective, where do you see the future? In terms of the growth of the banking industry,
uh, as the madam already said that you know the new applications are clearing uh, on a faster phase and the new banks are uh, coming up uh, maybe within uh, less than one year time and apart from that there are the existing banks who's uh, you know the coming up with, coming up with the new branches not only in the metros or the urban it's also in the rural if you come across the banking industry recent developments there are developments like uh, you know the financial inclusion rural banking uh, rural banking correspondent yeah when when i say in, in terms of the you know the uh, opportunity or the growth banking industry uh, is uh, giving a huge opportunity huge opportunity for the not only for the in terms of the employees as well as the it, in terms of the uh, adding of the customers to the banking port that is the you know major major concern of the uh, government also that you know each individual should come into the banking fold so that they should have the knowledge of the banking knowledge of the investment knowledge of the money where the money is coming from where they are investing how to you know start uh, operating the banking accounts uh, it is from the uh, rural perspective uh, you know through financial inclusion through rural banking through the banking correspondent everyone should come into the banking fold there is a huge opportunity for the growth huge opportunity for the employees growth huge opportunity for the recruitment and you know appointment of this uh, banking correspondent at a rural level that is one part the second part is you know the opening of the branches across the country in in, in urban and the metro spaces when the, when any bank goes you know opening up you know uh, asking a permission for opening up a branch in a urban and metro the obviously the rbi asks how many branches you have in a rural area if you have the you know the much rural branches it's easy to get the permission to, uh, to open the branch in urban and uh, metros so that part also if you see the you know metro branches or urban branches every corner you will see the you know each branch is having you know their uh, each bank is having their branches uh, let it be sbi hdfc icici private as well as the nationalized banks and government banks and uh, I completed this growth part. The last part is that okay. This is about you uh, know this is a, of you know the growing in, within the country. There is you know opportunity of the growing the branches, growing the business outside the country also. That is much needed for the our uh, GDP growth or uh, economic growth because the whatever branches we open uh, you know abroad, for that also we have to seek the approval from not only from the RBA from the foreign countries also. and through that the money infuse in india through the investment banking through the uh, through the financing you know the or through the uh, export the credit borrowing okay these our our banks okay who is having their branches you know outside india they helps the foreign investors to invest in india through that the foreign investment enters into india to manage that fund again we require the you know the investment bankers or the you know the expertise bankers or credit managers or the Uh, the trade finance managers or the you know the retail banking uh, employee yeah so, if, I, if i remember correctly yes. hdfc went ahead and uh, you know started opening branches at uh, 2000 yeah. so i mean so banks are becoming extremely aggressive in terms of reaching out so the penetration issue is being tackled very seriously uh, at idbi uh, you know uh, what what your strategy is Uh, presently idbi bank is having around 1200 branches and it is growing at the rate of say around uh, 25 to 30% in terms of the branch expansion this is, this year itself the coming uh, by 31st march 2014 we are adding another 300 branches so we are reaching at around 1500 branches in banking where i'll say that idbi bank is uh, you know it's a new entrant it's you know it it got uh, the government approval or the, you know it became the government bank in 2004 before that we were having only 300 400 branches and it was a private sector bank in 2004 the you know again the uh, parliament passed the bill to convert this idbi bank into the uh, or merge idbi and idbi bank into as a one entity and they made it as a government bank 
and since then the every year our branch is uh, no our bank is growing at uh, 200 300 branches in all the areas not only in the metro or uh, in uh, 50000 you know the population in all the areas you know rural urban semi urban metro all the areas we are growing and as you said the sir about the insurance and other these all are the you know the cross selling for the banks additional revenue generators for the bank uh, you know selling of the mutual funds selling of the insurance we call it as a bank assurance we have bank assurance partners each bank is having a bank assurance partners again there is a huge opportunity for the uh, you know the uh, new entrants or the employment generation in terms of uh, you know the uh, each you know bank assurance partner will be having two to three employees tagged to each branch uh, to take care of their you know the investment such as uh, life insurance mutual fund general insurance or any other investment advisory What's your viewpoint on growth? Uh, you are you are in a different segment altogether. So I, I would like to bring in your your focus on uh, you know y your sector and what what's the kind of growth that you are seeing and what is the kind of uh, potential for people to you know map themselves with your s sector. Good morning, ISBR and panelists. The growth part and all in this uh, banking sector, as uh, Manita and uh, Mr. Rajaram said, so it was means uh, appreciable actually. So lots and lots of growth in this uh, BFSI sector, and uh, in the financial segment, actually, uh, in this equities part, actually, we are handling. So in the equities, there are lots and lots of opportunity. I must say. So if people are really means creative, they are dynamic. They wants to enter in some some energetic field, they should enter in the equity market, they should enter in the derivative market, forex is there. So it's challenging job actually. So as if you are really wants to make money, wants growth in your life, okay, whatever you want, you can do everything in this, this business actually. So actually we all very much keen of growth and uh, our professional as well as personal growth that included. Nitesh, so, th there was this survey by CLSA which said that the, in the next 20 years, Indian retail participation in the equity market would reach about $600 billion. Now, uh, currently, where, where, where do you think we stand today if you, if you are looking at that figure? Uh, actually, if you are not wrong, then very less people are in investing into the market now in this equities markets or whatever the investment uh, investment products we are having in the insurance or in the mutual fund or in the debt market very less people they are enjoying that benefit because they are not aware they are not understanding the proper the products at all but nowadays in the industry we are also Encouraging the people, we are educating the people, okay, and we are expecting a big investment from our own country's own people, from the rural to urban and all. We think that we have uh, that much capability, or that much investment capability, I must say, to grow our GDP also as well as everything. So in that sense, I must, I am agree with that. That growth is. Definitely, is, there is a growth into this this segment, and uh, people will people are coming. They are very much aware regarding the market. Earlier, what used to have that uh, what whatever the products, even in the industry, people employ also was not knowing or they are not aware much about the product, but they were selling. Miss selling was used, but nowadays people are aware. All they are understanding each and every factors they are understanding so they are also investing investing their money smartly so industry also needs some smart people to grow this business and i'm sure i'm damn sure if uh, all means our if all will come into the market and will means right product with right enthusiasm we are selling the products then our industry will grow and all people whatever this in india they will invest 
into the, this market and economy will grow also. Uh, I have a question, which is, uh, you know, the kind of growth that is anticipated in this sector would require huge quantity of manpower to push it forward. Now, India is a country of quantities, right? We have people, right? Enough people. But yet, you know, there are a lot of, lot of these uh, broking firms, a lot of these banks who are, you know, training themselves, you know? Angel Broking runs an Angel Academy, right? Now, I, I'm told, I'm told that, uh, you know, out of those 5,000 people that Angel Broking hires, uh, about 30 or 40 percent of them are groomed at the academy. Rest comes from other sources. <coughs> now we, we are part of the other sources, right? So what I am I am saying is, I mean, what what is the you know what is the thought process at each of your sectors in terms of creating quality manpower? And do you do you take people and train, or you expect people to come in trained? <coughs> See, as Partha said, this we have uh, manpower, use manpower in India. So, and uh, I'll appreciate also this is cheap actually in India. So it is an opportunity for this industry also to hire in the cheap rate also. What people we are expecting means generally we are expecting a candidate at least basic knowledge. We are not expecting that extra ordinary people to come into the uh, into this our industry basic if they knows basics they will do will groom them with our our style our whenever uh, any freshers are joining we are giving a two two to three months full training session they are live sessions means in the, into the market what is the market strategy would be separate trainer is there, they are educating. Apart from that, the working environment we are developing for the freshers, that is really appreciable into the market. Because we have hired a few candidates from the ISBR also. They are doing well, actually. And the training part means uh, sometimes we are organized some training from this NSC also. People are coming from there. They are educating our employees then in the commodity segment also IRDA people are coming they are also educating our employees and all so training is definitely important important part and we are fully concentrated on that and all this is all broking firm nowadays they are fully means they are educating all our uh, not only this uh, employees but investors also because they know if investors are educated, then definitely they will put funds into the market. And that is what we want. If they are putting funds, definitely will, will also grow, they will also grow. Okay, and nowadays, we are fully dependent of, on the FII money. Because FII, whenever they want, they are pulling, pulling money and we are, our stock market is getting down. Or uh, it is impacted these other sectors also as well. But if all people, all are educated in this financial segment. So whatever products we are, have, we are having or all the industries they are having, if they are educating people with that right, right thinking and right passion, then definitely the educated people will come and our investment will grow like anything and will be not dependent on FIA at all. Vanita, uh, what is the uh, mutual fund sub-segment uh, viewpoint on the quality of manpower required and what, what kind of efforts uh, companies are making? Let me add a couple of more points to the growth. Then I will come to your question and the third question as well. One is uh, probably I would just request you all to just go run through the measures announced by Raghuram Rajan. One more or two more factors is just going to give a good boost to the banking system. One is actually the FCNR rate has been fixed at three and a percent, which is an amazing thing. Because currently, actually, the outstanding thing is close to $15 billion. They have a huge potential. So these banks can just cater to the overseas branches as well and try procuring that. That's uh, their uh, huge growth is there. Again, actually, the overseas borrowings by banks, that is, uh, again, uh, has gone up from 50% to 100%. 
that is simply huge it is doubling so when you just double the percentage obviously you need to double your effort so enough manpower force is required so obviously in the banking system and the in the complete financial service you have a, a huge potential huge growth and now uh, that's one thing and again uh, pato sir asked actually whether uh, we are looking for a trained candidate or whether we would like to just acquire and train so it happens in both ways so we are looking for a very quality manpower whom we can just train because now things have changed in a big way compared to last decade and this decade see earlier before uh, before uh, that is uh, in the earlier decade we might have spoken a lot about direct equity about fixed deposits so only that was familiar whereas in this particular decade we started talking about fixed deposits primary bond secondary bond and mutual funds life insurance general insurance real estate buying selling maybe lending big time lending uh, loans against property venture capitaling and then uh, private equity you might not have seen this much private equity players dominating in the industry in the earlier decades so you have a very huge growth and that to a quality uh, that is entire system and uh, just requires very quality manpower because all these we talk about something very uh, uh, strange in india frankly because private equity is a very risky investment which got into india so one is we have private equity players from foreign countries as well as local players even if you look at mutual funds earlier they were doing only mutual funds now apart from mutual fund they have pms they have private equity and they have realty investment so earlier when you say realty we will talk about only just going buying a land selling a land so it doesn't stop uh, there now now uh, we just talk about mutual fund also selling realty fund in the sense uh, rather than you going and just buying a, a particular property you just invest there they in turn will just scatter into different zones and they will go to mezzanine funding they'll just go to commercial office space they'll just go to uh, reits they'll go to n number of investment options just imagine all these uh, are very new investment methods and moreover with the regulatory bodies growing stronger and stronger only the quality manpower can understand all these investments first of all when you just go and talk to a client obviously he may be aware of fixed deposits can you imagine a client being aware of a private equity uh, just uh, a realty fund a pms not all may be aware i have a question vinita now uh, we we have people who take up uh, specialization in finance or some people take up uh, specialization in uh, marketing uh, but when 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 we talk to these financial companies in terms of uh, employment possibilities the predominant uh, jobs that are shared with us are relationship positions now i i personally want your you know uh, input because the companies say that we are open to take we are actually some some of them have actually said that you know we are keen to take people with a financial a finance specialization and who have a flair for marketing right now most uh, if i am a student i am doing i have done my finance specialization i i generally would like to believe that i should start up with an analytical role you know the you know ernst and youngs and you know jp morgans yeah, all yeah, offer yeah, you yeah, analytical writers. roles right now my question is why why doesn't these roles come from the indian companies say say uh, adilwai or say uh, you know aditya billa why would they not hire a fresh management graduate with finance specialization in a analytical role it is very simple too many cooks would spoil the food sivani say analysis research we can't just have lakhs and lakhs of people there and again actually Uh, uh even uh, for us also we would prefer to read bloomberg report so in other country they talk about indian country whereas if we just get into research which is it will actually just give you enough info but you need to read both the reports that's a frank fact because you need the report maybe whether it is a report or obviously uh, edelweiss inam securities obviously it's all very important because we are in india so we know what is a Uh, what is frankly or uh, ha- frankly happening in india so we'll get to the we'll get the actual facts in india and other than that when you just go to the global markets we need to know where exactly is india is being placed in the global markets so there we just look at the international players 
So we just look at Reuters, we look at ENY. They are exclusively made for that. And actually, as yes, they just uh, um, they are into global market, they keep hiring a lot of people because they are cooking the food, being an advisory role. We just really serve the food to the investor. So that's how we need to look at. So that is uh, when you say actually too many analysts. Obviously, too many cooks would spoil the food. You can't have too many analysts. You can have too many sellers. So uh, we can have one factory. And then we can just uh, take the finished goods to the uh, uh, this thing. Punita, uh, I, I will not name. There, there was this company which specifically told us that we would not take people in, in for analytical uh, job roles unless the guy completes about two years on the field. Now, why is this? See, as a student, I, I would like to start my life in analysis right because i am not grooming myself i am not you know uh, looking at starting a marketing career right so obviously i have not taken a marketing specialization i've taken a finance specialization and i personally would like to do something which is not a marketing job so when it comes to a company offering a relationship position insisting that you sell and then we take you back into the back office. I, I want to understand this. Why, why this? Now one is actually uh, analysts, we don't want to have too many because the fact is made very clear because we don't want to have too many analysts. Other one is when you look at relationship managers, as I said, so uh, it is, they are the ones who take the products or the advice to the end users. So actually there you need too many people because looking at the uh, demography of India, Obviously, we just talk about more than 50% uh, being less than 30 years of age. So, there is a huge potential. When you say people are so high between this age, there is a huge disposable income. So, once you just get into job, obviously, it's not that you'll swallow the entire money. You'll prefer to invest some money. So, when you just say you prefer to invest some money, yes, obviously, you need a proper guidance. So, the people who actually get into the crux need to be more. So, the advisors need to be more. And again, actually, uh, we have seen a number of candidates stating, no, no, we don't want to get into marketing. So marketing is there everywhere. So whether it is uh, FMCG or pharma or uh, financial service, it is everywhere. Only thing is, it has to get into the end user in a quality way. So when you say you are advising a client, yes, you need to properly guide the client. You need to just help the client and just uh, uh, going through a proper uh, uh, financial planning. And uh, the end... Uh, uh, end thing is obviously it's asset allocation, proper asset allocation, review, rebalancing. It's all part of it. So we need more number of people only for this, not for the research because research is being taken care of by uh, uh, either your global partners or by the local partners. So many companies say like Aditi Virla, uh, Inam, uh, this thing, they have their in-house partners because they have in-house research. So actually already they have, see, um, one uh, research analyst or uh, when he was in the earlier companies, we used to have only three, four team members in the research. Whereas uh, if you look at the overall size of the company, we used to have around 4,000 employees. So four research analysts would suffice for this many people because the research is going to supply its common inputs. It all depends on the advisor as to what all they need from them. So ultimately, the end, uh, that is the advisor should just be able to study, analyze everything on uh, their own. Because ultimately they are only going to just meet the investor or a corporate or an institution to guide them as to what they want, to analyze and then guide them uh, as to what they want. Vinita, uh, uh, I have three questions uh, coming in from the audience. If, I, if you could, uh, you know, uh, impact of rupee fall against dollar in the financial sector. Yeah, and scope of financial consulting in the current market. Let us and go one by one, sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm telling you the questions. I'm telling you the questions you can handle. I mean, three of you are here. Uh, uh, what, is, what is the third one? I, what is the need of our? Okay. What is the need of the hour in the current sector, which, which we talked about in the beginning, actually? Yeah? So. 
Mr. Pata said, the hiring process, uh, I mean, people are very much interested, keen to interest in uh, analytical job, not in the marketing. So let me tell you all, we all are selling here. Nitesh, Nitesh, it is not about people. I mean, any MBA, I'm not talking about any MBA. I'm talking about somebody who's coming out with a finance specialization. Yeah, whatever it is, whoever, whether it is a IM guys or from ISBR or for, from any business school, they all are selling. Businessmen, they are selling. So we all are indirectly or directly selling our products. So let me clear all our salesmen. So don't think that you are into the marketing business, you will get too much pressure to handle that job or to survive in that particular business. Never ever think, as much, as much as pressure you are able to handle, as much as you will grow. Your, your comments, Raja. Uh, this is regarding the, you know, the analytical jobs in uh, the service industry, especially in BFSI. What I suggest is don't just look for a BFSI industry for analytical job or research, industry, uh, research job. Also look for the IT industry, pharma industry, you know, or the healthcare industry, where they also require the people like business analytics. Okay, there are a lot of openings, uh, openings for the business analysis in, uh, so, you know, in all the industries. When we say the analytics and research job, it's not only into the banking or the, you know, the financial service, and you know Indian companies, the Indian companies also like you know credit rating companies such as Ikra and all. They are they also require the you know the business analyst and all the mutual fund companies, all the all the you know the financial uh, service industries or the banking industry. There is a percentage is very small. The requirement of business analyst uh, analysis or the you know the research uh, candidates, you know the percentage is very small. Because of our industries, you know, we have to cater the public. Catering public require 80% of people to service the customer. 20% of the people back end needs to, you know, the back end service or the analytics as well as the research. Such as in, if you come to the bank, you know, bank. If I if I take the banking industry example, uh, there will be you know uh, research and analysis job will be there in only in few you know departments such as. Uh, credit rating or credit analysis or the you know the trade finance or the you know international uh, banking or nri banking in that areas we require only the you know 10 to 20 percent people oh, that to you know the after the you know serving into the the general customer service they come to know what what customer is in uh, requires after that only they can go to the analytical job in a banking and other industries okay thank you uh, now, shall we come back to these uh, impact of rupee fall against dollar in the financial sector? So, so uh, the equity markets viewpoint, the mutual fund market viewpoint. Uh, that impact of rupee fall means is a really means lot of impacts into the market. The main impact is first. I'll tell you this. Uh, stock market is falling a lot so another one if one rupee is increases or like one dollar is increases compared to the rupees right now it is I think uh, 63.4 and it is closed yesterday so if it is one rupee increased means it becomes 65.49 tomorrow then we are adding up in our CAD at least in 8000 years we are losing so that is also a bad impact of our, our industry because we are import, importing oil that impact directly impact of the rupee. And but there are several reasons in this uh, rupees fall also because we can't say the rupees fall. When the rupees was at the level of uh, 53, 54, it was overweight actually. 50, 53, 54, till 54 it was overweight. And uh, analysts were expecting that it should be stable at certain points. When suddenly it started, and dollar demands has come into the market. When the dollar demands has come into the market, it started depreciating. So when rupees started depreciating, it's again our so many 
other issues has come into the market industrial growth then our political issues and all so that suddenly it's increased and it lifetime high reached that is 69 level around so that was really pathetic at that time market was also falling but we are expecting that rupees to stabilize at a certain points around uh, 58 to 60 level so at that level we are our industry and all growth will be stabilized and uh, there will be not much volatile volatility will be there into this rupee because the new gov that rbi chairman uh, that is also there mr raghuram he has come and lot of confident has built up into the market so we are also expecting <coughs> that it will get stabilized vinita your opinion yeah i'll divide the question into two why rupee got depreciated again everybody will just talk about current account deficit account deficit and how does it come what is the component now obviously when you say the imports are higher why the imports are higher it's higher as we just import oil gold and capex capital expenditure there is a capital goods so when you say gold can you uh, there is the imports of gold up, uh, just gone up just feel like just going to as they uh, they have seen more even in the streets now that is one again oil with every 1 rupee uh, depreciation india is just paying around 9500 crore for oil to just uh, that's a uh, this thing so so only it is impacting one is we just said oil gold uh, import other one is capital expenditure anyway it is it shouldn't must happen then only the economy will in what way it is the rupee depreciation has just impacted the investments particularly the mutual funds and maybe other investment options as well so has it impacted or not is another question as well i'll come to that so first is yes because when you just talk about rupee depreciation it talks about uh, the confidence on the economy so people actually that uh, all fii's they just made huge investment in 2010 so maybe in the beginning of 2010 it was selling close to 45 rupees per dollar so now when it went up to 68 rupees being a normal end user you just assume you are a layman and you are an fii will you not try to book your profits it's a huge difference here just because they invested at 45 it has just crossed 68 it is more than 23 rupees per dollar it's a huge appreciation again no confidence uh, there was no confidence on the government because one is the uh, current account deficit keeps just going up and no effort has been put like they felt so that's the reason one is a confidence on government fell down and as such actually the rupee got depreciated and apart from that the profits have been huge for them they felt it is a big time apart from the return on the investment whatever they have made from 45 to 68 itself is a huge profit so these two are the major thing and what way it has impacted mutual fund one way it has impacted other way it has gained what way it has impacted in the sense as yes, obviously the fii's who used to just invest in mutual funds is pulling out their funds like the direct equity they started pulling out funds in this as well again what way we all know that it has impacted but it has also just uh, added funds what way it has added when excel uh, when uh, the equity markets falls when the dollar uh, gets appreciated and rupee gets depreciated obviously people feel like getting into safer investment option so mutual funds they started coming out with a lot of fixed maturity plans so one way the flow of the equity funds fell down as they felt the market is trailing it's not going to go up soon and as such they have made a huge profit they just tried pulling out their funds immediately with the efforts whatever uh, rbi has taken whatever government of india has taken the uh, investments at least now they tried diversifying the investment or else the rather than just uh, they going out of india they tried attracting through other investment option so your 10 year government security which is supposed to be like a benchmark to the debt market went up to 9.4% which is uh, that is all time high in 5 years so that way actually they tried attracting the institutional investors when they lose confidence they just felt they can just get into the safer investment option 
because government of india security obviously it carries a sovereign guarantee they tried attracting by just uh, taking them to the 10 year gsec route now again the 10 year government security has just fallen to close to 800 percent so mutual fund houses they wanted to make best use of this opportunity they tried coming out of the fixed maturity plans see like you as an investor you as an individual if you go and just buy a three month fd in banks approx guess as to what is the return you will be getting any guess a three month fixed deposit in banks and a one year fixed deposit in banks being a corporate investor uh, with the tightening measures whatever the rbi has announced recently rbi made it very clear every bank is supposed to keep a cash reserve ratio out of the cash reserve ratio 99% of the reserve is to be kept in liquid then how will bank go ahead with the activities how will the lending borrowing happen very simple they have to go aggressive procure fresh funds start lending uh, that's a that's a idea can in we have a banker's view point of this just for what you, what you mentioned <coughs> Yeah, uh, the, as the madam uh, rightly said, when the madam, the, no, the liquidity in the banking industry is curbed by the RBI as well as the government. But <laughs> as they say, it's a uh, temporary measures. But uh, we, the banking industry, we observe uh, each and every industry very closely, and we analyze them very closely. The impact of this rupee falling on it has, you know, given, you uh, know, the adverse effect as well as a favoring, uh, you know, effect to the industry. There are industries who got the favor favorable response, uh, no, the favorable result also out of this uh, falling rupee, and uh, there are industries which, which got badly hit uh, due to the you know the uh, rupee impact, and uh, the industries I'll name those industries such as IT industry, pharma industry, healthcare industry, who are into majorly into the export, they they are into huge profit out of the uh, the dollar price increasing and rupee falling. There are industries who are importing the capital expenditure goods, you know, oil companies, and uh, any small company who is you know associated with uh, these uh, you know the large companies who are importing the goods from abroad. They are also you know facing the you know huge uh, loss out of this uh, because of the uh, rupee falling. So for a banker, is it a good time? Is it a bad time? Or is it a neutral period? It's not neutral. It's not bad. It's not good for us. I'll tell you how it is. This is it's a kind of. It's kind of. You know, we are in. We are in a crunch. Okay. Uh, some customers are you know happy. Some customers are not happy. And you know the some customers are neutral. You know, it's the customer impact. You know, customers impact. I'll tell you, like NRI customers, like export oriented units. Uh, units. They are very much happy. They are more happy. There are industries who borrowed and who who want to borrow. There is no fund. And the RBI has increased the rate such a way that you know the liquidity is uh, al almost is you know erosed in the market. So we are you know just waiting like uh, you know the RBI to you know we are waiting like you know the uh, the uh, like you know uh, see to see the God. Okay, when the God will open the door and you know release the you know <laughs> money to us. Okay, the so RBI uh, governor is like a God to us. When he opens the you know cut down the rates, opens the door for the you know the water to come out or something. It's like you know the we are waiting for uh, liquidity in the market so that we can also start lending. We, the industry also start growing. There are you know the badly industrial industrial growth also if you see it is badly you know taken a hit and uh, all the industry uh, industrialists all you know the bankers we are waiting for the RBI to cut the rate. Yeah, uh, I believe the, the BFSI segment is actually looking at uh, two events very very you know with with a great deal of anticipation. One is the Federal Bank, yeah. One is the Reserve Bank. Right, so both both are supposed to be coming. So my question to two of you: As an investor, should I feel scared? Should I run? Or should I stay and believe you guys that yeah, nothing is going wrong, and my wealth will be uh, you know secure? Or should I invest more? Is what I'm asking. Parto, one question from my side. Yeah. Okay, I have a question for uh, Vanita because uh, you are into you are holding now the prof I mean uh, financial planning for a C profit, right? That's so, right. So when the inflation is on the it's picking up, when the inflation is picking up and the rupee is falling, so in such stage, in such phase, how do you keep the investor motivated, and how do you make him comfortable? Like okay, 
is it only the advisors who do that or is there any policy or a strategy which says like okay where he has a clarity about okay this is what uh, makes me okay go ahead and invest on this particular product or a project so uh, if if you could just give some insight on this now one is actually investors mind is being influenced by external and internal factors so one is rather than trying to for us for pathos's question first is the question should be even more elaborative in the sense rather than trying to time the market you need to really look at the time what you are going to spend in the market if you are an investor who wants to just invest for 3 months yes i'll just suggest you an option again if you are an investor who uh, that is who wants to make quick bucks then i'll say please run away and again if you are an investor who says i am uh, very aggressive my risk appetite is tall i can take up a uh, bold risk because it is my extra money i'll say please invest your entire funds not entire funds invest in your entire funds in a safe mode called a liquid fund get into equities in a staggered way because within a year to come we are just uh, expecting the elections so the markets are likely to be range bound so at this kind of market it's uh, you have a huge opportunity to get in it's a time to just buy because the index has only gone up not all the stocks you mean that lnt is uh, got the uh, fair value itc has got the fair value no because of the market the prices are low but actually the company's financials are strong they have done extremely good they can survive for another 5 10 years without taking the fresh contracts so that's one thing so when you say you want to just uh, should i just stay investor should i just uh, invest further should i run away for that actually i need to just really look at your goals look at your asset allocation look at your risk appetite but frankly speaking for uh, if it is a debt if a investor wants to park some funds for 3 months 1 year 3 years this is the best time to invest because the yields have gone up so you will not get this rate again if you are an equity investor yes it is a good time to invest because and everybody quits is the right time to get into that because uh, you might have uh, any questions related to this uh, this point please any questions from the audience before that maybe probably we can answer abbas sir's yeah. uh, question as well yeah. because one is being an advisor the rule is good uh, quite crucial because one is the investor's mind is being influenced by the external factors as well but in case of the investors with the right advisor they won't go very panicky i have seen a number of my investors who used to say uh, i call you uh, frequently you know why vanita i used to ask what for and when i talk to you i get the confidence because it's not that my returns have gone up overnight but i get the confidence i get an idea as to whether i need to stay invested or need to add or need to run away so both the questions are almost similar any investors money is to be advised after doing a thorough analysis because frankly speaking i like this trend it's a very challenging decade i really love working in a financial service i'm very happy doing my job i'll not say like others no it's scary targets are right no not at all if you deliver a proper job if you are a quality advisor you will feel this trend is quite exciting because lot of challenges you can't advise like earlier you need to read lot of books you can't just read only indian updates you need to read as to what the international market says so when you say advising a investor yes you need to just go through a proper approach and you need to review the investors portfolio frequently when uh, the uh, crisis happens yes maybe take an example the investors who have just invested in debt funds they really just burn their figure last 4 5 months because the government security yield went up every one of you when you say government of india you will say guarantee but as of government of india securities concern it carries a trading risk the it, it won't default that should and but uh, it carries a trading risk so because of the trading risk whom so were invested in debt funds they had a negative return again no fund was suggested for 3 months the funds were all suggested for one and of two year three year period so i am very sure it will recover back already the recovery has started happening in fact we just went back to the investor we said you bought an fd maybe in the layman's language you bought an fd when the yields were 7 and a half percent now it is 9 and a half do you feel it is good time to balance your portfolio again one cent of investor said they didn't have much confidence they said no no what is the chance that it won't go further as yes, one is if you have excess money you can keep balancing but looking at the current measures taken we hope the yields may start dropping which has already started happening because the 3 month cd rate was just sailing at 11.8% to 
today is just going less than 11 percent in less than a week's time again one year was just going at 10.8 uh, percent now one year there is i'm talking about a cd rate bank cd rate not talking about a company fd so bank cd rate was sailing at 10.8 now it has already dropped to less than uh, 10 10.2 percent so that's how we look at one is the investor who has got some more funds to deploy we will just ask him to just add at this market other one is the investor who wants to just quit at this point of time maybe you know we'll advise them to stay invested again if the investor doesn't have extra funds to deploy at the same time can stay invested maybe with a negative mindset we'll advise them this is what is happening in the market and and uh, this is what you need to either if your horizon is long term you need to stay invested if you have uh, that is uh, it all depends on the investor's mindset and how the advisor has just guided the investor because nothing is complete without a review it is a financial planning is not a one time job you just do a complete analysis advise the investor after that you need to keep on reviewing maybe if a investor is cautious or a cautious clients we won't be suggesting him uh, uh, even uh, even a uh, 10% in equity it depends on the risk appetite so any kind of client needs to review the financial planning it can be a financial planning it may be without a financial planning we can't just uh, expect a 70 year old client to just go with a proper financial plan i think uh, the point you just made brings us to the next question so the prospect of financial cons consulting in the current area uh, mm. current uh, time is huge mm. right That's true. financial consulting in the current situation is a That's huge true. huge career right career or or a area area to uh, yeah obviously explore. yeah this uh, your, your little elaboration on that yeah one is at this point of time A lot of uh, corporates, as in a lot of companies, are entering into the finance sector. How? It is green and very good. Too many parties are good because whether it is stock market or any investment option, it is demand versus supply. When your demand is higher, lot of opportunities. So the if it is a stock, obviously with too much of participation, the values will go up. That in turn will just end up giving a good return on investment to the existing investors. Again, the growth. we talk about growth our governor also talks about growth so by just uh, with the fresh entrants the fresh energy would come in the system maybe you now uh, why is there so much dullness in the system because expansion activities didn't happen because the capacity expansion as well as the capital expenses have not been spent in the past in last 3 4 years so that is the reason for the dullness and the drowsiness in the system with the fresh entrants and with the fresh investments happening obviously things will change in a big way in fact that is only required now i'll just add a few more uh, you might have heard uh, the biggest investor in the world can you guys guess who is he <coughs> anybody sorry yeah somebody says is warren buffett right he is the biggest investor actually and how is 
is a business is, uh, investing style anybody will anybody will tell any guess is valuation wise he is investing there is a two style of uh, investment actually one is growth wise another is valuation so when valuation go any companies the value goes down if you are entering in that company definitely you will make money because the value sometimes even the mar at this uh, worst scenario the value is coming down so is right opportunity to buy that particular stocks or that particular company share he was he was trying to add something else Uh, this is about the you know the new entrants in the as you, as uh, rightly said new entrants in the financial industry and how it is impacting to the existing players uh, in a banking industry it's a, in a vice versa it's a different story okay uh, when i elaborated the banking industry though still there is a you know lot of opportunities there for opening of branches and opening of uh, you know the uh, new overseas branches rural branches and all but if you see the existing players there are almost around 75 you know scheduled banks are there who's already competing each other and there are other you know the cooperative bank cooperative societies and uh, you know the other uh, small uh, banks in the small towns and all it's very difficult to sustain in the banking industry they have to struggle a lot whoever is the new comer is there new bank is whoever is coming they have to struggle a lot if you see the you know the rbi governor statement or the rbi is you know the the scrutiny statement and all they have to maintain their 4% crr from the day one and they have to maintain their 25 23% slr from the day one okay they have they used to have the huge money they have to borrow the huge money in initial stages and they have to meet the break even of that at least it will take around 8 to 10 years it will take 8 to 10 years for any new banks to come in the system and you know the stabilize 8 to 10 years is a minimum time is required and that too, if they are capable then only they can survive otherwise the story will happen like you know the the global trust bank kind of thing who got merged with some other bank if they if they are not competable okay if they are you know the not up to the mark if their strategy the management strategy if their asset and liability management style if it is not suitable to the you know the existing banks or the, you know the uh, or old generation banks like uh, the nationalized and government banks they cannot sustain in the market only because of this uh, the relationship management or uh, only huge marketing uh, activities and they cannot sustain there should be the you know the structured uh, structured management and there should be like systematic management of the fund then only they can sustain in the market thank you uh, i have a question this question is about investment in gold so we just want to have some clarity about the advantage and disadvantages of uh, investing in gold because very free so why is so and we just want to have some more clarity about it as madam rightly said last 3 year return if you see the gold rate uh, return is around 15% everyone you know was moving towards investment into the gold so uh, yeah it's the advantage it was advantage for the investors so it's not by the financial market. yeah it is not advised uh, considering the indian economy If, if the people start investing only in gold it's the, it's the investment where the investment is not earning anything for the economy anything not earning anything for the government uh, yeah it's not it's current account deficit went to be because of the gold so that is why you know it just uh, despite the government measures the excess duty was at 1% before two years now it has just come to 10% because why it is done is just to just discourage the gold investments so why it is to discourage because if you want to invest in gold gold is an international commodity obviously you have to import when you are importing that adds more so the main uh, ingredient which just uh, brought the country to this level is the imports of gold so that is why finance ministry just went helpless and just came to the media and said please don't buy because he took enough measures one is he just kept on increasing the excise duty in less than a year from 4 to 6% 6 to 8 8 to 10% person till uh, people went adamant because they have seen the return on investment nasdaq they went but again actually it is really killing the economy because the imports are going uh, growing uh, very huge so so only he just said and plus minus maybe being an investor should you just invest or not it's a uh, definitely you know, i would suggest you to invest in gold again 
with a proper asset allocation. You should not invest your entire funds in gold. So you should just know max to max, it shouldn't go beyond 10% of your overall investment portfolio. If you just want 100%, <laughs> then obviously can't help because India is a country which even consumes gold. Would have seen uh, <laughs> Swarna Bhashma and all. People eat gold. <laughs> uh, India still remains the biggest consumer of gold uh, worldwide, right? So now what government says is uh, yeah. government is having an idea yeah. to convert gold to gold certificates. So they yes. are even just planning maybe you'll end up getting the return of gold at the same time you'll not be importing. <laughs> That's the idea. For government it is really killing. As an investor you can definitely invest but at the proper asset allocation. Any other so questions you would like to shoot? Any other questions? I think he wants. Yeah. Uh, what is the scope of for HR in financial sector? HR in financial sector, obviously, you know, every industry is growing. When you talk about growth, obviously, uh, human resource department plays a major role because it is a constant effort is required. So, because it is not uh, whether it is to an investor or to an employee, obviously, it doesn't stop in recruitment alone. After recruiting, there is a real constant effort being put. <laughs> In training the manpower, after training, actually just keep them updated, keep them run into the face. Whenever actually the vehicle runs out of control, obviously you have to just <laughs> make the necessary, you, to, you need to take the enough initiative. Yes, there is a huge growth. Because when you talk about expansion, yes, HR plays a vital role. Thank you, ma'am. Any other? Yeah. Whatever government has taken, obviously it has to, it has already just from 68 levels, it has just come to 63 and up. Going forward, we just expect it to be at uh, 60 levels. So we uh, don't want them to get into a trading thing. So we want them to get into equity trading, not into majorly currency trading. Because... There are a lot of investment modes. See, you have the same whatever she asks. You have international gold funds as well. You have a lot of international funds. Because one is, uh, investing is one thing. After that, understanding, reviewing, quitting is one thing. Because uh, investment doesn't stop with simply buying and keeping quiet. You need to be completely aware. You need to be knowledgeable enough to handle your investment. So where you, uh, because in the busy world, where you have lack in that expertise, you need to better get into a funds or better get into a mode which can participate in the international markets. So that's a better way. See, a lot of international funds are there, gold funds are there. Gold funds, again, you have uh, uh, maybe world gold funds which can participate in companies which are into gold mining. A lot of other uh, investment modes. Okay, uh, la last, uh, yeah. Sure. You advise them to enter into the uh, currency market, currency, uh, the future, currency forward. Okay, uh, we will. We are, you know, running short of time. So, if there are questions, let, let them be short quickly. Sir, my question is for uh, banking sector. As as you rightly said, there are 72 scheduled banks, and uh, all the banks are opening different branches throughout all the villages in the country. Still, there is a need for the new entrants to come. Is it because of the non-performance of the government banks or uh, you are encouraging the new entrants to come here? Because as of now, the government banks and still the private players are capturing more market compared to government banks. So how do you feel like fresh entrants uh, will be coming into the, uh, this sector? So can you explain why? As I rightly said earlier, earlier I already, already you know, mentioned that it's, a, it's a not good competition. It's not a healthy competition for you know, too many banks in the, uh, in the industry. And in the other way, if you see the, you know, the public, the you know, public also should get the banking service. As I, as I mentioned earlier, each and every person in India should have the bank account. That is the aim of the government. For that, you know, they are giving the license to the government so that you know, the 
which our banks want to open a you know, branch in uh, urban and uh, the semi-urban and uh, metro, they have to take a RBI permission. For There is no per, you know, uh, 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 permission for the rural banks. They should open four banks in a rural in a rural area to get one permission in metro. Okay, there is a condition. Through this, what government or what RBI is planning is the you know expansion of the banking service you know to the every part of the country. Through this, the through new entrants, you know, obviously the the each and every person you know the person in India will get the banking service, and it's uh, it's not non-performance of the any government sector or any of the nationalized banks or something. Each and every bank is doing well, but the only part which is uh, killing the banking industry growth is the NPA. NPA is eating out the profit of the uh, banking uh, banks, okay? And that is because of the, the bad customers or the bad loans in the, in the industry. And if they curb the NPA, and you know, there are a lot of you know, measures are there, debt uh, recovery tribunal or the, you know, the Surface Act. Through that, you know, the banks also are recovering the, you know, the uh, ba the bad NPA, NPA loans and all. Through that, you know, all the banks are doing well. No bank in the, in India which is not doing well, except one or two. Okay, thank you. One more, uh, one more question. As of now, like uh, government banks are recruiting more. The recruitments are taking more in number, but the attrition is also double in number. So why that is happening? Uh, because banking sectors are attracting fresh graduates uh, with a higher qualification also, even though there is no requirement requirement for that particular post. Even the particular post basic qualification is uh, some graduation, they are attracting M field PhD candidates also, but they are not uh, holding them in their banks. Why is that? Is it because of lack of training or uh, how is it? Is that government bank? Attrition, attrition in government bank? Not uh, in all the banking sector. I'm okay, thinking. okay. Attrition, go, you know, the government, uh, sorry, the banking sector, it is there. Uh, majorly, it is in the private sector banks because of the, you know, the expertise, because of the, you know, the not coping up with the situation or, you know, because of the various reason, maybe the personal reason, maybe the, you know, family reason and all. The employees will be leaving. There is attrition is there, okay? But uh, majorly, it is from the private sector banks, uh, the contributing the more, uh, you know, attrition. And the training part and all things, it is there, you know, more in the, the government sector bank. They, they train the employees, you know, when they take the employees, the two to three months uh, on-job training, classroom training, which is not there in the private <coughs> sector bank. They just, you know, throw you into the market. They, you know, like, uh, ask you to handle the relationship, the, you know, the sales pressure, maybe the, you know, customer service pressure. Okay, and, you know, the more banks. Because of the more banks, employee will be keep, you know, uh, hopping the jobs, you know, because of the attrition, it's also contributing for the attrition percentage. Because of the more banks in the, in the industry, the attrition is more, but it is less in the government sector bank. Thank you. Is that all? Do you think when other than uh, MBA in finance or BGDM in finance, anything else we should uh, or eligibility or anything for that? Yeah, uh, good question. I actually I kept this for a uh, you know, conclusion of this uh, session. Okay, apart from doing MBA, you know, as he rightly mentioned that even the graduates also can enter into the banking industry or any of the you know the banking service industry. I, I sincerely request you people is not only look for the campus uh, selection or you know the company will come and pick you or you know the government banks also coming for a campus interview and all. Don't don't just look for the those uh, you know the opportunities. Uh, there are other opportunities also. If you, you know if you go through the uh, Wednesday newspaper or if you go through the Rojgar Samaj, uh, you know, Rojgar uh, news and all. In that you know there are uh, IBPS is uh, you know the banking recruitment selection board which conducts uh, you know, the uh, written exam and interview for uh, 19 public sector banks. Okay, yes. keep applying for those exams. On SBI, uh, now the SBI also comes under S IBPS only. These kind of uh, government uh, bank exams, RBA exams, keep applying that, okay? Don't expect that you'll get a job immediately, but keep applying. Through, through that, what happens, you'll get the knowledge. How to know the... Uh, no, no, but what he's sector. saying is, is there any other qualification that they... Oh, yeah. Qualification is, you know, we just look for a graduate or the postgraduate. Apart from this, you know, if you have any other, you know, the courses like uh, uh, NFSM, 
or the no yeah, I, I think that has become kind of mandatory in uh, both both your segments yeah. right fsm or any of the you know the courses like in nsc certification courses nsdl, NSDL certification i course. think i think uh, yeah Uh, uh, your, your sector, well, I'm, uh, I'm told. The broking yeah. sector, uh, we need uh, NCM certifications. So that will give you an advantage. NCFM, NISM certifications from the currency market. If you are entering the currency market, then NSM 37, 3J. So that will give you extra uh, advantage. See, like, uh, first is above all, let it be any industry. Read papers, read as, ma uh, read as many updates as possible. That's one uh, very important thing. Because a lot of things are happening around, you need to be aware. That's one thing. And uh, other one is uh, for financial service, to advise on mutual funds, NISM is mandatory. That is an institution which is just imparting knowledge on the mutual fund selling. And again, actually, once you just get into the system, is if you want to just advise on insurance, IRDA becomes mandatory. Again, for IRDA, to advise on uh, life insurance, you have, you have to just do a separate exam. Again, uh, to just advise on general insurance, you have to just write a different uh, general insurance IRD thing. And again, as uh, he rightly said, uh, is, uh, NCFM exam is mandatory. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, I will not say it is mandatory, but yeah, to gain mandatory. knowledge, uh, yeah, to yeah, get into, uh, yeah, to get into broke. Broking, it is very much mandatory. What kind of profiles we can get? I mean, uh, MBA in finance or PhD in finance plus these kind of certification courses? No, it depends on your passion. So you have to decide as to what you want to do. So once you just decide, if you want to just get into uh, this thing, uh, in the equity broking, NCFM will just impart you enough knowledge. And uh, what all the mandatory things? Maybe one is, uh, again, you have got a number of modules there. So it depends on your interest. If you want to become dealer, yes, you have to just go through the NCFM dealer module. Again, actually, on the capital markets, to advise, so you have got a number of modules, so based on your passion, you need to decide. So if you want to just get into the advisory channel, obviously, NISM and IRDA becomes mandatory. Again, one course which is just becoming very familiar, which is just trying to impart or bring in the quality in the system is Certified Financial Planner course. Maybe if somebody wants to just analyze want to just basically do the complete research and analysis, CFA is the best course. And again, the opportunities are huge, but in, if you just get into every organization, the opportunity may be the percentage of recruitment may be very low. If you want to just get into the advisory model or uh, advisory uh, thing in uh, banking or financial service, whatever, wherever it is, we'll look at NISM and IRD. Thank you, ma'am. And CFP is no doubt an added qualification. If somebody just the CFP is yes, obviously they could feel the difference in themselves because it will just take them to a very quality path. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I would like to now uh, you know thank all of you for paying so much attention. Uh, but I knew this, I knew this because uh, I am reminded of a song that was very popular when I was a kid. Uh, there was this group called uh, ABBA. In case some of you might be knowing. They had a song which is called Money, 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 Always Money, Money in a Rich Man's World. Yeah? So I, I am extremely, extremely, my, my focus suddenly has shifted from a life of, you know, limited means to unlimited wealth. So these people have kind of induced the area of wealth where all of us would go. Yeah, there will be hiccups here and there, but we'll struggle, but we'll reach. I'm extremely, extremely, extremely grateful to all these three people present here to have shared their time. On a Saturday for a finance professional is an extremely, extremely tall task. So I'm extremely grateful to all three of these people who are here, from all of you. And thank you all for participating in this. We hope to continue this process further. We bring you more people who talk about their sectors. 
and with this we would conclude today's session thank you so much on behalf of the entire isbr family i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our panelists today for sharing with us their ideas and views about the growth opportunities in the financial sector i would also like to thank our moderator for the day mr partho ganguly for fac fac facilitating the discussion i would like to thank the audience for their support and cooperation thank you